Hey you, welcome. Let me ask you one question. What does travel truly mean to you? What experiences do you crave for? And what fills you with excitement? Let me tell you what it means to me. Since I was a boy, I dreamed of cycling around Australia, crossing the Andes or climbing in the Himalayas, visiting places where nobody set a foot before and experiencing the sounds and smells of the rainforest. Since a long time ago, I dreamed of seeing, experiencing and learning more about the world and the people living in different corners of our planet. Not all of my dreams are possible right now. Some never will be. But even if they were, before circling the globe and discovering its many cultures, I want to discover the world around me, the places that are closer. So I decided that the next chapter of my life will be dedicated to Europe. I want, no, I will climb the highest peak in every country in Europe, learn about the people and the culture of each place I visit, and explore the diversity of this small continent. Instead of hopping from country to country in a plane or car, I want to travel at a slower pace, only using public transportation. And I challenge myself to do it in only 52 weeks, 52 summits in 52 weeks. Thank you for joining me on the Peaks of Europe. Hey, and welcome to this video and welcome to the first episode of the Peaks of Europe, my project to climb the highest peak of every European country. Currently, I'm in the train. I left Vienna, I left Austria, crossed the border to the Czech Republic, and I'm heading to my first stop, Bruno. Have fun with this video. The first summit on the list is Mount Snieszka in the Czech Republic. When I was deciding where to start this journey, I wanted to have a mountain that's not too harsh, since it's the end of the winter, but also a bit challenging. With that in mind, Snieszka with its 1,000 1603 meters should be the perfect choice. The mountain is in the north of the country on the border with Poland. My plan is to go with the train from Vienna to Brno, continue to Prague and from there take a three hour bus to the small town at the foot of the mountain. But let's take it one stop at a time and head to Brno first. Alrighty, I arrived, got the key, here's my accommodation and this is really, really heavy. Let's go. It's Bruno is the second largest city of the Czech Republic, famous for its beautiful modernist buildings and its brewery, Staro Bruno. It is a really beautiful city and way calmer than Prague, but having the same charm. Brewing beer has a special importance in the country and it's deeply rooted in its culture. The Pilsner and the Czech lagers are worldwide known and appreciated. Even American Budweiser was copied from Czechia. The Czech cuisine is equally known and appreciated and the perfect thing next to a beer. The food is really rich in taste and it's definitely, together with a beer, something I want to try while being here. I left the accommodation and even showered. Now it's still too early for beer, so I decided to discover the city a little bit. And I will search for the Dragon of Bruno, which apparently in the past uh, dragon terrorized the city. Someone killed it and now, as a warning or as a memory, they put the head of the dragon somewhere in the city, so I'm gonna find it. One of the most famous legends of the city is that of the dragon of Bruno, which used to terrorize the people living here. The story says that this beast used to ravage the cities and their livestock, and no one seemed to know how to put an end to it. That until a visiting butcher had an idea. He built a trap from an ox and he hid inside of its body a great amount of caustic lime. After hiding it, this trap looked like the perfect feast for the dragon. After finding it and devouring this Trojan feast, the dragon was finally vanquished. There are similar tales like this all around Europe, but only the people of Bruno have a body to back the story. However, the body of the mighty dragon is just the one of a crocodile, but lies as a testament to those dark times. That was slightly disappointed, it's just a crocodile. I'm really curious about the history behind it. It's not a dragon, but a crocodile. Nevertheless, I would be really interested. How did a crocodile terrorize the people? Anyways, still nice to see. I always wanted to see a crocodile. While walking around Bruno, the city gave me a real warm and cozy feeling. The sun was almost gone and it was time to try the famous Czech beer. I got it. Cheers. To the peaks of Europe. And that is basically the plan. I'm now staying in Bruno, but uh, leave basically to Prague. On Prague, I travel directly to the mountain, 
which is on the Polish border, make the mountain and then head back to Prague. And then we leave, head to uh, Hungary, which is the next mountain or the next country. From there, we basically head then directly to Serbia and uh, make the Serbian mountain. For now, <laughs> I'm really happy to have some Czech beer. Cheers. I'm really happy and positive that we will do all the 52 mountains and everything in time. Cheers, friends. Even though I really like the city, the peaks of Europe is on a very tight schedule, so it became time to continue my travel and leave for Prague, the capital of the Czech Republic. With a direct train, I had the perfect direct connection from Brno. Welcome to Prague and welcome to the first capital on this tour. I will leave the stuff, pack my backpack and uh, head tomorrow to the mountain. So I'm super, super hyped. The only thing that worries me a bit since yesterday the weather is crazy, it's like really, really cold, unusual cold, there was even some snow. Now I have my minus five jacket on and I definitely think I will use the crampons. But yeah, it's part of the challenge. I'm actually quite excited, even though I'm a little bit in spring mood because of Madeira, but it is what it is. We make the mountain tomorrow. Let's go. Oh my God, walking with uh, this huge luggage, especially with all the winter equipment, crampons and everything is really, really tiring. I'm still looking forward after the Balkans to lose some weight, but I arrived and I can't believe I really arrived. It feels now really surreal. The first big stop. Now I somehow need to find out which tram to take and how to go to my accommodation. Everything is packed and everything is ready for Sanjeczka, the highest peak in the Czech Republic. And yeah, it can start tomorrow. I can't believe that it's going to start, the first peak. I also tried even my crampons. I made sure everything fits and lucky me they are fitting. So there's really nothing in the way anymore. Well, almost nothing in the way anymore. Overnight, the weather got even worse. On the mountain, the wind was raging at up to 60 kmh. The visibility was very low and temperatures as low as minus 10 degrees. With the equipment I had, the summit was not really possible. Nothing can stop me except of the weather. With the equipment that I brought, not really possible to make the summit. So I decided first mountain we delay. But while waiting for the next weather window, which should be in the next few days, I was not completely lazy. I not only discovered the Czech culture, discovered Prague a bit and got a haircut. I also prepared a bit more the upcoming mountains and the route uh, for the next mountains. And there's one thing I want to try while in the Czech Republic, which is something that is almost everywhere in the world forbidden, including in my own country, but not in the Czech Republic. And this is Absinth. I want to take the chance while being here. Let's see if we find the Green Fairy. Absinth, also called the Green Fairy or Green Devil. In the past, it was said it causes hallucinations and triggers violent behavior. This led to being banned in many countries. But in recent years, it's gaining more and more popularity. And now you can consume this liquor not only in the Czech Republic. While in Prague, I want to try this warm wood liquor, adored by so many artists in the past, and hopefully find out why it was forbidden for so long. I know it sounds super strange, but I need to admit I'm getting a little bit nervous. Since I know about Absinthe, I always thought it makes hallucinations and it, it's forbidden. So what I'm doing now, trying it here in Czech, even though it's allowed, it feels somehow forbidden. So I'm getting a little bit nervous, but we're gonna do this, we try. I decided to try four different types. While waiting to receive the magic liquor, let's speak about its ban and why people say it causes hallucinations. Will I see the green fairy? <laughs> Not really. The ban came mostly because the extensive consumption of absinthe threatened wine producers. They were the ones starting the rumor that absinthe is a dangerous drug. Warm wood consumed in large quantities can actually really cause hallucinations, but the quantity you'd have to ingest will first send you in an alcohol induced coma. In 1905, a Swiss farmer murdered his family and attempted to take his own life after drinking absinthe. The wine producer's lobby conveniently ignored the fact that the farmer was an alcoholic which consumed considerable amount of wine and brandy next to absinthe. But this was a tipping point in this hot debated topic. In many countries, a ban of absinthe quickly followed. I would love to tell you more about the taste, how it's served, but I never drank absinthe before. <laughs> and what can I say? I cannot drink strong alcohols. No shots of strong liquors. So I will let my facial expression speak for itself.
On the tasting plate I had two types of absinthe, two macerated ones and two distilled. The difference between them is it's in a way that's being served. I definitely did not enjoy the macerated ones. They are extremely strong and bitter. The distilled ones on the other hand were more enjoyable, <laughs> more or less. This was definitely an experience. I'm really bad generally with hard drinks and liquors and this was way out of my range. Till now I have this crazy spice in my throat and it doesn't really go away. I also left half a glass over, but um, yeah, it was worth the experience and definitely probably one of the things that you need to have done one time in your life and was nevertheless nice, was a nice place. And there's now one more thing I want to try, which is sort of a typical bar snack, uh, something that you have in the Czech Republic while drinking a beer. There's even a saying that if it's a real bar, they need to serve this. It's called Drowned Man. So I want to find the first bar and basically find out if they really sell it. Otherwise, it's a bad bar. While the pubs, restaurants and cafes are slowly filling up with people and the city center comes to life, I leave it. Into a more local district. I search for a typical Czech pub, where I'm hoping to get one famous Czech beer snack. This, my friends, is Udo Bennett's. It's a pickled sausage, but even more than that, it's the most typical beer and bar snack in the Czech Republic. Probably in any place that sells you beer, you can get this sausage. I have it together with another very typical snack, which is pickled camembert. But back to the sausage. Uto Bennett's, the name of the sausage, means translated drowned man. And the story goes that one day there was a miller who also had a bar and he said, or he invented it, and he said, if you put the sausage in a jar, it looks like a drowned body. The irony in the whole story is that one day, he made some reparation on the mill, he slipped, fell in the water, and he drowned. That's why the name drowned man stuck. So the Ute Bennett's comes with bread and a lot of onion. I love onion, so this will be perfect anyways. Mm. Perfect. Let's try the sausage. Mm. I can understand why it's served together with beer. It's probably the perfect thing if you had one, two beers and you want to fill up your stomach a bit. But let's try the cheese. Mm. Mm. This is perfect. It's like a bit spicy with paprika. It's really, really good. I'm really bad in describing taste, but it's really, really delicious. And both of them, I, I really think they are the best beer snacks. Making sure that you have enough energy while you're maybe on your second or third beer. And for me, giving enough energy for climbing tomorrow month's Nieschke because the backpack is packed, everything is ready, tomorrow we hit to the mountain. Finally the weather started looking a bit better. There was a forecast of light snow and rain, but no storm inside. The time has finally come, unbelievable, but it's true. I am heading towards the mountain. I need now to walk a little bit, go to the bus and then uh, have a quite long bus ride and then I will tell you everything. What is the plan? But for now, I'm a bit in rush because I need to reach the bus. From Prague, I need to take a bus to a small village. After a three hours ride, I arrived at the foot of the mountain from where I will start the hike the next day. Welcome to Pek Pot Sniesko. And I practiced three times to be able to say it. I came here after three or four hours bus ride, which was very interesting because the weather was actually horrible. And yesterday it was like raining really, really strong the whole night. All the rivers that we passed uh, in the bus were like really flooded. But now, perfect weather and there in the back on the mountain, you can see already snow. So now I just need to find my hostel and check in and tomorrow we're gonna make the mountain. I'm excited. Peak number one out of 52. I arrived in the hostel and funny coincidence, or maybe actually not coincidence, maybe it's destiny. The room where I'm staying is called Snieszka, the mountain I climb tomorrow is also called Snieszka. If this is not the perfect sign, I don't know what it is. I brought with me my small backpack with all sorts of things, even though I don't plan to sleep on top of the mountain, simply because the tour is too short. I brought, for example, a small sleeping bag in case the hostel would not have had any, any covers. Also I brought, I don't know, spikes, my snow clothes, rain clothes and yeah, some other funny stuff. And of course, always with me in case something goes wrong, the first line of protection, my first aid kit, which is of course not enough because especially as a full-time traveler or a mountaineer, safety is really important and you need some protection in case something goes wrong. 
That's why I want to introduce you to Genki, which is also the sponsor of today's episode. During my travels, I tried many different insurances. For me, it's essential to have insurance that I can trust in Europe or worldwide. And in case something goes wrong on a mountain, I need them to have my back. One of the reasons why I choose Genki and what I really like about them is that it's an insurance made for travelers by travelers. You can tell by using their insurance that they really understand the needs of travelers and nomads like me. Genki works wonderfully for me because my travel will be long and I need to be covered for an indefinite period of time. It will be at least one year. But with the right plan, I can even make it a lifelong choice. You may not need this, but no worries. There's a plan for everyone. Plans that are short term, long term, plans that cover almost every sport, you name it. Depending on your travel style, lengths and needs, you can choose from three different plans. For travels lasting from one month up to two years, the World Explorer may be the best option for you. It is the basic one and it's suitable if you only plan to use it for emergencies and medical necessary treatments. If you're a more adventurous type of traveler or a long-term one, going around the world for at least one year or longer, World Resident or World Resident Premium are a better option. They are more or less the same, but you benefit from coverage on all kinds of sports, telemedicine and more. And for the Premium one, you even benefit from preventive care. By using this link here, you can check more details about each plan to see if any suits you. But I'm pretty sure one will. If you're a traveler, nomad, or if you want to have simply your back covered, I can really recommend Genki to years insurance. I put a link down where you can sign up, find out more details, and by using this link, you also help me and support my project. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the video. Look there in front, this right thing. I think this is the mountain where I'm going. And it is snowy. So I can finally use the crampons and I was so hoping for a snowy ascent. Let's hope there will be some ice and some snowfall and then it's a perfect ascent tomorrow. While I discover the village a bit, let's speak about the peak. I will make a circle trail from the village. I will climb up 810 meters of elevation in order to reach the top of Czech Republic at 1603 meters. The distance to the top is around 7 kilometers. The descent will be on a different route, but more or less the same distance. The weather forecast for tomorrow is clouds and snow and some rain in the afternoon. Unbelievable, but it's finally starting. After two years of thinking about this project and seven to eight months of planning, I am finally here, ready to conquer the first summit. Good morning, I've had an excellent night. Mm. Got a fresh coffee and it's perfect weather. I'm so lucky. It was supposed to be cloudy, rainy, snowy, but it's perfect. So let's go and let's make this damn mountain. Cheers. The first few meters were already an amazing surprise. I thought the trail would be overrun by people, but so far it was just me and a really beautiful forest. I need to see, I'm getting hot. It's perfect weather, I'm so damn lucky. Crazy. I really thought it would be a ascent in rain and uh, snow and ice. The weather changed, no wind, no ice, no rain. I'm lucky. Whew. I'm getting to check it off and we just used the shed. Made already the first 250 meters of elevation. And soon I think we break through the forest and then have to ascend on some snow. At least that's what I saw on the route. But let's see here, now we are on a height of 1000 meters. And here there are already some traces of snow, some snow. But I'm excited that there's at least a bit of snow. Let's go, I expect more snow later on. Woohoo, snow. Beautiful, I love snow. So there we were beneath the burning sky. We both had a reason to live, but so much more to die. We'll fade to side, who has to go? Oh, oh. We both know. I can't tell you how lucky I am with the weather. The forecast predicted rain and snow, but now it's the perfect late winter day. Only a small downside. It's really crazy. Next to the trail, there's everywhere trash. And now I don't have anything but from next mountain on, I will take always like a bag for trash and take the trash from the people with me. It's really disgusting. It's basic respect for nature. Take your trash back at home. Ah, people. Uh, enough is enough. I use my protection of my toothbrush 
and start collecting the trash. It's really disgusting. Ay, ay, ay. Humans, we humans are pigs. Let's make this from every mountain and we try to find how much can we take, bring back home. Let me check actually the elevation, I think. Now we should be fairly on top already. 1200 and we're gonna go up to, I think 1600 in total. 400 more meters, easy. Category, coolest trash I found, a sock, just a single sock, not two, just one, in the middle of the snow here. Time for spikes, beautiful, this is fashion. <laughs> I found a sock, now I found a t-shirt, interesting, it's a whole t-shirt, a very big t-shirt, crazy. Who loses a t-shirt? How? And what is the person doing without, with only one sock and with only, without a t-shirt? And spurred up here, ascend. I think it's around one more kilometer. Twenty more meters, and this village there—that's Poland. Somewhere here, there, down there is the border. My original plan was actually to go descend there, but I have not enough time, so I need to make this round trip and go back to this village to take the bus today to Prague. Huh. Let's make the last twenty meters come. And also, the last twenty meters of elevation were done, and the first peak of Europe were conquered. Czech Republic with Mount Snieżka and its one thousand six hundred and three meters. First out of 52 done. Welcome to Mount Snieżka, welcome to 1603 meters and the highest peak of the Czech Republic and the first mountain of the peaks of Europe, the first of 52. The mountain was actually really nice, the weather was perfect until I think two minutes after I arrived and suddenly the fog came so I cannot show you nice drone shots or nice views. I really hope you enjoyed it. The next mountain will be a new episode and I hope to see you there. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and also if you don't want to miss the next episode, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. See you next week for a new adventure. Ciao, ciao.